Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Good evening and welcome to the 30 June Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Roman number one, public hearing RSA 31-95-b. 3 Alpha want to apply for an aquatic resource mitigation grant for the Hampton Stormwater and Wetland Management Program in the amount of $39,570. Motion to open the hearing, please. I'll so move at 7, whatever it is. Second. 1900, the meeting is open. Mr. Welch, please, sir. Uh, is Mr. Morrison here? Yeah, good. Why don't you oh, come good. up and. Is it right here? Yes, yep. sir. Please. We hope so, because you're the expert. Okay. <laughs> Camera's on me, right? Um, I, I'll be brief. I know you have a busy meeting. Uh, my name is Michael Morrison. I'm a, I have a company called Swamp Incorporated, and I work for many different towns, kind of a liaison between uh, environmental agencies, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and other uh, people that provide grants and services. So um, we had a meeting in Hampton, and and uh, obviously, uh, I mean, thirty percent of Hampton's land mass is actually salt marsh, and we all know that. You know, we have some problems with the phragmites and other things. So, the idea was to apply for some grants. I, I've gotten these grants in the past before, and this is this particular grant is one that's uh, of particular interest to Hampton. It's it's for um, mitigating uh, like malls or highways or anyone that impacts wetlands has to pay a fee to the state now, and that. Those fees are put into a grant application. The grants are very competitive, but it's a great way to uh, mitigate any damage to wetlands uh, by improving other ones. So I think, uh, you know, Hampton's, I, I met with Lori Summer at New Hampshire DES uh, last week to talk about this particular grant and, and uh, some of the ideas for it. And, and uh, we also, uh, by, by this new stormwater and wetland management program, it provides a vehicle to apply for grants. And, and I think it'd be very attractive and very competitive that your town has this program to accept grants and, and to, uh, you know, to mitigate some of the problems that are happening. So this is the first grant application we put in for, and uh, it's due on August 14th, and I already have some ideas on various, uh, pro the stormwater people have, have showed me some of the uh, inflow sites that are flooding neighborhoods, that uh, mainly because of phragmites and sediment in some of the inflow ditches, so... I think that'd be a logical place to uh, to start some of our work. Thank you very much. Any public comment from those in the audience that are in attendance tonight? Seeing none. Mr. Welch, comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we uh, we met with Mr. Morrison um, two weeks ago now. And you're about that, yeah. About two weeks ago. And uh, we he has worked with us before. He has done a couple of demonstration projects here in town. Uh, we do have some issues, particularly... Um, Meadow Pond and the areas in that general vicinity for Phragmites that are causing significant problems. Um, in fact, uh, Cusack Road is uh, to the point where it's it's almost buried because of the height of the <coughs> Phragmites and the abutting uh, properties. Um, Mr. Morrison is willing to uh, go ahead and, and submit for these uh, grants and to work with us in trying to manage that Phragmite population and try to reduce it to the point where we can again have a pond, I hope. Uh, <clears throat> and that, of course, is something that Public Works would like to do because we, it, it contributes to the flooding on the streets. It contributes to the backup of the drainage systems in the town. And uh, it would be a benefit if we reduce the fragmented <coughs> population in the community. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. I don't want you to take my remarks personally because I believe you're trying to do a good job. A lot of the reasons the frag mighties are there, and we've had prison crews cutting those down in the past, gentlemen, is because the DES and some other individuals have allowed building in the marsh, like at the end of High Street and Cusack and the planning board and the zoning board. And we are perpetually building in the marsh and in wetlands <coughs> and causing problems for neighbors. And now we're going to go around cutting a couple of frag mighties. It's not that easy. <coughs> How are we going to stop the building in the wetlands? If you have an answer to that, 
Yeah. You, you went. I, I don't no, think that's part. I don't think that's part of the scope. But of, we're dealing with a situation. I'm, I've got that, 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 but 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 to, 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 to just respond to the rhetorical question, those those are different town boards than this board here or right. this this hearing. Please continue. No, I just I I we're mopping up after making messes, mopping. and we're getting to the point where there's nothing <coughs> to be any mopping up. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Done? I would like to say that the reason why the Phragmites are growing at where the property on Boar's Head is, is there's all Phragmites there and around those condos, is all because of the water pipes for the state yep. and the town uh, back up, and the road is constantly flooded in my house. And am I right in saying that Phragmites come from fresh water? Yes, very much uh, so, well, by desalinating the marsh. Yeah. Right now, I have in my uh, area, I have all of the wood chips from the condos down the street have drained directly into my property. So I hope that you'll take a look at those Phragmites because they're very close to, uh, they're very close within 10 feet of a house and if they caught fire, the house could burn down. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. The, uh, the idea of this program is to, I work with Not the Hampshire, my house, but someone else's. I, I've worked with the Hampshire DOT and invasive plants and other things too, but the idea of this program is to address the, uh, all the parties involved too and try to come to a consensus a lot of this a lot of the any any work that's going to be done has to go through the permitting process too with with the wetlands board and, and uh, it would be subject <coughs> to some reviews from many different people including yeah. including the highway people but right now we need to define you know some of these problems a lot of the the stormwater issues it, mrs woolsey's right the uh the stormwater has been altered the way it's running onto the marshes now and it, it's it's uh, those are the areas that really. You have don't to be have to at. tell me that. I know all about it, but it's mainly because of the town and the state have sure. not kept up with the sewer system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the past, whenever whoever was that wiped the Phragmites out the last time, maybe it was the prisoners, uh, they did it at our my location also. Yeah. They're they're very high. You can't even see over them. Yeah. They're enormous. Yeah, it used to be when when it's a healthy marsh, you'll have cattails growing there. Yes. They yeah. all the cattails have been seen for years, and it's all from the fresh water sure. from not going into the drain system. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's not leaving the marsh; it's sitting on the marsh. Yeah, yeah, true. Yep, Mr. Bridle. I know years ago they used to they used to dig the canals out in the marsh and in the drainage ditches and stuff like that. None of that has ever been done. Is this so? <laughs> Part of what you would do too. Yeah, good, very good point. I, actually, the, uh, the the ditching goes back to the uh, the 30s and 20s when, uh, mm -hmm. when the marshes Salt were real. Marsh, hey. Yeah, they were ditched to uh, to get rid of mosquito breeding. Right. And uh, yeah. ironically, it it actually it, you know the, some of those ditches are working pretty good still in the middle of the marsh, but the edges they aren't. And that's right. Right. you know where the, the lots of development. Hampton's pretty intensively developed now, so the stormwater. It is trying to enter the marsh and leave, but the Phragmites is filling the ditches, causing more sediment to build up. And the pools. And the pools of what the fresh water cannot leave the uplands <coughs> the, the so way they should. As part of what you do is, is yep. recreating these these canals and channels and ditches that are out yeah. there. Yeah, and and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of agencies involved to it. We wouldn't just clean the ditches out per se. We'd have to look at other things too. Is there enough fish and wildlife habitat? Are there are there minnows there that eat the mosquito larvae? Is the Phragmite just going to come right back unless we, you know, alter the hydrology somehow for the better, get salt water into areas and let, but, but the big thing though is, is uh, with, with the fresh, the fresh water issue is huge. A lot of people think that salt water needs to get to these higher areas and then that's the end of the game. It really isn't. It's, you got to cut the, uh, the head of the snake off and that's allowing the fresh water to run through the marsh. That's the first thing you have to do. Otherwise it sits in the marsh, desalinates the marsh changes all kinds of things and allows the Phragmites to, uh, to come in and, and dominate, and even over cattails, which are a very aggressive plant, too, so. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Waddell. It is a great program, and I think restoring the marsh, marsh is uh, really important, and Phragmites, I know where I live, are a problem, too, down High Street. Um, and you're the expert, so I'm I don't going to do anything. But uh, what is our responsibility? You're going to apply for the grant, right? Yes. And then do we have a... We'll administer it. Okay. It, as a town. And will it cost us anything? No, Please. just, in, well, just in, internally to, you know, to okay. there's no matching uh, required okay. with this particular grant. There might be others that are. Okay. A lot of times those can be matched with in-kind services, uh, you know, DPW maybe providing removal of debris or something like to that effect. That's kind of the idea of it, is to, uh, 
to. And there's lots of grants out there that people aren't applying for because they don't have, you know, the someone to really pay attention to it and, 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 and just be focused on that one thing. And that's what the intent of this program is. Awesome. Thank you. A motion, please. Um, I have one yes, more comment. Does it occur to anyone that we wouldn't be in this position if they hadn't done this in the first place? And I'm talking about DES as well. You just might remind them in casual passing if you... Sure. Mind. Yeah, they're... I don't involved. have a problem with the grant, but I really object to the horse has left the barn. We've destroyed our marshes, and I'm really unhappy. <coughs> I'll make a motion to situation. Uh, accept that we do it looking for or what? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. It's un uh, under Second. the agenda if we can. I'll make a motion to apply for the Aquatic Resource Mitigation Grant for the Hampton Stormwater and Wetland Management Program in the amount of $39,507. Second. Any further questions? I mean, any further discussion? Seeing none. <laughs> All in favor, unanimous. Thank you. I would just like to say, Mr. Walsh, now uh, it was about a year ago this time that the Army Corps of Engineers came in about put, fixing those drains, and they obtained a uh, permit to do that. And I they believe did. it was a two-year permit. That's correct. So what's happening there? We're going into the last year now. The state is doing nothing. Huh. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> The permit was issued to them because it's in DOT jurisdiction. They are their drains. And so far, the state has made no movement to put together anything to, in fact, accomplish that. That involves five or six drains going down um, yeah, there's Route 1A a of them down there. that are tied together. <laughs> and uh, the outfalls are uh, behind your property and behind the, the condominiums just be up below you and, and uh, at Little Jack's. And, uh, they were going to uh, go in there and cut that all out and, and uh, ditch and uh, and put some uh, some some brooklets back in there so the water the, the fresh water would run out and mingle with the uh, the regular uh, marsh water <coughs> and dissipate. Uh, but they have done nothing. As you know, in fact, the town went down there because it was so dangerous and actually cleaned one of them out. Mm. It because it became such a nuisance, uh, particularly in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. The time is now uh, <coughs> seven eleven. Thank you, sir. Thank a you. motion to uh, come out of the uh, public meeting. I public will meeting. so move at whatever time you have on your clock. Eleven minutes <coughs> past seven. Okay. Second. All either. those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, a slight uh, uh, deviation from the printed agenda. Uh, Roman two. Public comment period, please. Anyone in the public? That wishes to speak please yeah I think we have someone out there if that's you I think yeah <laughs> good evening ma'am please sit right up here stand at the podium if you need to sit you can sit oh it doesn't matter whatever is good for you okay, ma'am and just please identify yourself hi um I would like to thank everyone for meeting me on such short notice. Um, my name is Diane Bushy, and I have a taxi business in Hampton. It's called Abba Taxi. Um, I've been in business in Hampton um, since 2010, uh, I mean 2002. Um, I was licensed in the town of Hampton um, from uh, 2002 until 2010. And then the um, regulations changed, the insurance regulations. It went up to a million dollars. Um, a quote I have from Cross Insurance um, to insure two vehicles for one million dollars is $17,200. Um, I am licensed now in the town of Seabrook, and to the town of Seabrook, two vehicles cost me $7,200. <coughs> um, I'm hoping the board will consider one of two things either considering consider lowering the amount of insurance re required um, the premiums affordable for a company the size of mine or waive the ruling under the town code of ordinance chapter 44818 reciprocating with other mun municipalities i believe we pro provide a service to many people within the town of hampton we actually work very closely with michelle kingsley um, we provide transportation um, for people that are residents of Hampton to doctors, um, to homeless shelters, um, and um, other other things that may be required. 
Um, Apitaxi also provides a service to the many restaurants, pubs, and bars located in Hampton and to the patrons who frequent these establishments. The patrons have a reliable and safe source to call when they feel as though their patrons have had too much to drink. Um, I have attached notes including a few of the many other services we provide to the residents and visitors of Hampton. And again, thank you so much for meeting with me on short notice. Um, may I pass these notes out to you? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Are we going to put this on a future agenda or? Do it. Yeah. Thank you. I was planning on bringing up during old business if possible. Oh, what, thank you. Whatever the board pleases, you naturally, this is public comment and there's it's not interactive. So, um, yeah. Selectman Griffin says, uh, states That's that he'll fine. be bringing this up under old business and we'll be discussing this later on in the okay. meeting. <laughs> thank okay. you, ma'am. That's fine. So, you're welcome to stay here and, and, and um, okay. observe. I do have a question. What do I do <laughs> until then? Uh, Just sit and watch. <laughs> Just watch. <Okay. laughs> it's a ball of fun. <laughs> Any other further uh, public comment, please? Further public comment? Uh, and seeing none. Announcements in community calendars. Like Mawolsey. <clears throat> Are we not doing appointments? Yep. We shall after announcements of community calendar. Oh, all right. Um, I have. A couple of thoughts here first of all I think that I personally and I, I believe this board uh, would send um, our our best wishes and our respect to Ryan Pitts of Nashua he's going to be the ninth Medal of Honor winner from the Iraq Afghan wars uh, and uh, he's being honored for his activities in 2008 I believe the president is going to award him the Medal of Honor next month um, outstanding uh, young man and once again uh, I don't what can you say about the service these men have provided um, the, I, I saw an article <coughs> in the paper about uh, Ellen and uh, David Gaithels which uh, I thought was really neat and their hard work uh, over the years with the um, environment and also a nice young woman 12 years old God lover in Rye uh, campaigning to get the cigarette butts off the beach. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not implying. Yeah, no, I'm not a smoker. I'm you not look at me. That you're doing. <laughs> but uh, there, there are some wonderful people, and I congratulations to Ellen and David, and also to that nice young lady for being proactive and trying to make their community better. And that's a great article if if you have a chance to read it in the uh, Seacoast. Um, Paper. Thank you very much, uh, Selectman Wilson. Thank you for bringing up that uh, um, that point on the Medal of Honor for that New Hampshire soldier. Ryan Pitts. And, yep. uh, and, and just a, a, a semantic issue is that uh, um, there were never any winners of the Medal of Honor. You are a recipient and you are awarded that medal. Right. Selectman Griffin, please. Uh, nothing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I would just like to say uh, uh, thank you to the fire department. Uh, they responded to uh, my mother-in-law this morning and uh, treated her very well and I got a call afterwards and it was done and while I was golfing today I was talking to a former selectman here who said they went to my mother-in-law last night too and they took her and she was very well treated so I just want to thank them for all the work they do. Well, thank you. So I'd just like to uh, congratulate Hampton Beach for being named one of the super beaches and also being named the best beach in New England. Uh, I think that's a huge honor and I think everybody should know that, be aware of it and uh, it's great, super. Thank you sir. Mr. Welch, any announcements in community calendar? No, sir. Thank you very much. Roman four appointments. Number one, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, Alpha 2013 abatement approvals. Sir. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I presented, um, it's actually com one abatement comprises three abutting properties. Um, I gave you the information. Um, I also want to let you know the one, there is one abatement remaining. Um, I've been in. Um, contact with uh, our expert um, on that property from a prior appeal and uh, that should be ready uh, next meeting or the following meeting to present to the board but tonight the abatement I'm presenting uh, is recommended for a refund uh, total amount would be two thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars and twenty nine cents and would answer any questions you have thank you selectman Wilson I have no questions are we getting we're getting down to the bottom of our pile now right yeah, just that one remaining one, which I need to get to you. It's been challenging. 
I have no questions. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Suckman Griffin? No, thank you. No Sir. questions. Suckman Modell? No questions. Also move that we approve the assessor's request for abatement of $2,745.29 for whatever the, the name of the individual is. Hunter Investment, Inc. Hunter Investments, thank you. Thank you, sir. A second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Before he goes. Yes, ma'am. I've been discussing with Ed, and, I, and I, we need to go into this, I think, uh, later on, but I just want to drop a penny in the well at the moment. You are lacking a what position for the, what did we discuss this morning? I the, the second data collector that we Data we collector, have, thank yes. you. Uh, I have a friend who's buying or potentially buying a piece of property in Hampton. It's a piece of property that my late husband and I owned. And when I looked it up in Vision Appraisal, and I, like you, are probably referring to Vision Appraisal Frequency for homeowners' policies and so forth. And I <coughs> noted that the information was incorrect. And so poor Ed um, is always there to answer my questions. And it, it uh, did not occur to me until now, but I'm finding this more and more. Apparently, the assessing records, we were so slow to go on computer in this town. I mean that. We were so slow to become computerized with our records. Fred knows what I'm saying about. These records were kept in paper and paper and paper files. And I think we deserve as a community to understand the, the chain of events that, that are happening with these properties. I think we need to understand, A, when the property was really built or developed and who owned it and who sold it to whom. And I think it's a deplorable gap in the records. So at some point in time, I would like to discuss with Ed, perhaps in conjunction with the uh, budget for 2015, restoring a data collector position so that people can continue. Uh, former Selectman Nichols, by the way, did yeoman work with Ed trying to get that office in shape, right. but there's still a long way to go. There are many, um, many properties that do not have any real provenance showing for them. And I think historically that is a problem for this community. I think we should be able to look at whatever dwelling or, or structure and understand when it was built and who owned it and who sold it to whom and so that we have a better historical record of what's happening. I can't thank Ed enough for what he's done in that department and Mr. Nichols certainly was a, a good um, partner and, and back up when you first came here. So I applaud you. I congratulate what you're doing, but we have a lot more fine tuning to do and I want to get you the help that you need. I appreciate it. So that. I thank you very, very much. And Mr. I Chanker, to thank you it. very much. Thank you. Roman four, number two, Christy Pullman, finance director. William. <clears throat> time you go hunting and vision appraisal, you'll think of that. He's not even cracking a smile. No, he's not. He's, he's very serious tonight. Director, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm here tonight with the May um, income and expenses statements. It's for the fifth report of 2014, and the target is 41.7%. The month's total income was 674.1K. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 326K, which is 104K above the monthly target above the monthly budget. This now puts motor vehicles 132k above budget plus 4.9% for year to date. 4.97% for year to date. And with a line down there today, as Mr. Dean saw, I'm sure that number has grown quite a bit. <laughs> the line was to the door for the majority of today. Um, the other major contributors to the contributors to the month's total were building permits at 15 15.9k, parking lots at 11.4k, Franchise fees at 54.4K, interest on taxes at 41.2K, departmental income at 57.4K, and a health trust uh, refund of medical and dental insurance for 2011 and 12 at 121.8K. And the real estate trust was at 45.5K. Um, uh, the expense summary at the end of May, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs was 39.9% of the budget, which is lower by 411K 
from the month's target of 41.7%. The majority of the departments are below the target level and don't have any major issues. Um, the finances budget account is at 50, postage budget is at 50.87% spent, a result of the first half of the tax bills went out in May. So that takes a large chunk of um, our postage budget. Personnel administration, the annual um, bank buyback program, when combined with the employee separation cost account, are 109K over their year to date target. These two accounts are the reason the overall group is 1.41% higher than desired. However, this gap has closed in a little from last month's report of 3.3%. So as we go through the year, that gap is closing. Um, municipal insurance, the health insurance is on target at 41.72%. And the police department is at 35.3% overall when the open POs are included. Two accounts in support services, part-time special officers, and summer coverage full-time have a combined budget of 395k and was only 30.5k being expended to date accounts for 134k of the department's favorable variance so a lot of the variance in police is related to the fact that we haven't come up to their busy season yet we're approaching it now the fire department is at 39.8 percent overall when the open peels are included the four fire suppression ot accounts overtime wages through vacation are at 33% of the annual budget, but this favorable position will also shrink as we go through the summer season. Highways and streets is over target by 2.4%. <coughs> Municipal sanitation continues to run slightly below its target. Um, patriotic purposes is over tar target by 35.7%, which is related to the purchase of grave markers and flags for Memorial Day. So that's the majority of that account is um, always spent yeah. for the Memorial Day holiday. Under warrant articles passed at town meeting, the majority of the social services have received their requested funds. The cost for the second of nine months relating, related to the um, ZBAs has also been booked. So uh, that was all I had for the financials. You guys should have all received them. They were also posted on the website at the same time, and the budget committee received copies also. Thank you very much, Director. Selectman Wolsey, questions on the monthly financials? Page two on the general fund revenue report, Christy, and congratulations, and it's nice to see you here. Thank you. Um, are we going to open up a line for the wastewater treatment plant buy-in fees? I'm not sure whether we've collected any yet, but I would like to see that segregated out because we've just uh, approved that the uh, wastewater, fee, the sewer connection, the sewer can, and not not the, the sewer hookup. No. But the buy-in to the treatment. <coughs> Correct. I think we and the public deserve to see what revenue is being derived from that function. I'm I'm sure the building inspector would probably be the one to advise you of that. And I would like to see if we have started to get revenue from uh, that uh, action that we took, and then to be able to continue to follow. Okay. Um, as the permitting process goes forward. Okay, according to the uh, rules and regulations, actually Fred and I were just discussing that day, we have taken in money. Um, right now it's sitting in deferred revenue. According to the rules and regulations, uh, it's to be set up as a special fund through the oh. treasurer. Okay. I can report that to you though because it will come into our office. We will keep copies of it just as we do impact fees. Okay. But the money will actually leave go over to the treasurer to be put into a special fund to only be used for the purposes that are set up in the rules and regulations for that. that so is, we have collected money though. I don't have the number, but I can get that for you because I've had um, Katie tracking that for us. Excellent. So I do have an amount. Excellent. Fred, in conjunction with that, now are we going to have an amount that the treasurer is collecting for this calendar year? And then are we going to have to create a warrant article for next March, or is this a fund that can be set up? It's a permanent fund. The, the, the board, under their powers, the sewer commission has established it. So we, so the fund is already in <coughs> place. That's correct. So the week it was said then, perhaps would it make sense to get an accounting of that similar to the EMS fund or the recreation? Well, I think what you'll fund? see is, is as soon as all the paperwork is finished, you'll see some accounting for it in the monthly 
monthly financial. So you'll see where it's going every month. It, you see in the revenues or in the funds? It'll be a, 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 under a fund basis. Good. It's so not like going to be part the of the revenues. fund, yeah. we'll be able to keep track that way. Yeah, it's, it's a little different than that because we're not going to be drawing any money from it. And it's being right. invested by the treasurer. But we'll see the fund grow or You can track that, yes, and make sure that you see how much is going over to. We're already tracking it in our office. Excellent. We already started. If you want tomorrow, I can send you what has been collected so far. Excellent. And I balance that with Chris Jacobs at Public Works, too. Good. So we are um, keeping track of well, it. Well, we did it, and I'm very pleased in behalf of the town. So thank you very much for that. I'll look forward to seeing that grow. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin. Thank you for your report, and I'm uh -huh. glad to see see that everything seems to be going very well over there. Mm -hmm. uh, about a month ago, I asked Mr. Welch about um, having a discussion on uh, expected new revenues that are coming in in the coming year and two years. Mm -hmm. uh, so <coughs> when will we be getting around to that, Mr. Welch? Well, I, I want to let her get acclimated to what she's doing at mm -hmm. this point. She mm -hmm. has to work with the treasurer on the funds we were just talking about. Yeah. There'll be some other funds, for instance, the sewer connection fees. Uh, which we're working on now, and we believe that those need to be put into a separate account as well. So um, we want to get all those accounts set up and then come back and chat with you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Could you put a copy of the report in my box? I didn't get it in my packet, so. Oh, okay, yeah, it went out a couple weeks ago. So okay. Yeah, that might be why you're missing it. Maybe, maybe. Oh, you mean the... <coughs> yeah. 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 So. I've had, I've been... All right, maybe one. I have it in my bag at home. Yeah, because uh, it went out, I think, like two yeah. Fridays ago, I believe. All right, I'll And it went out to everyone? Probably June 12th, June 12th, actually. June 12th. Okay. Thank you. Selectman Waddell. Thank you. Good report. And uh, I agree with, with Rick that at some point we get to talk about new revenues and stuff yeah. and where they're coming from and how they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I sat and talked with you about this a couple of weeks yes, ago we or so, which, which yeah. was a nice discussion. And, you know, as long as you don't see any problems with any of the different departments and you don't see anything glaring and I think we're going smoothly right now. I think so too. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Director um, Bravo. Possible refinancing of older bonds. I just wanted to give you guys a brief um, update on that. The bids were due last Friday. They came in, um, we had four bidders. Right now um, we're working with Century to firm up to see if we can get all the way through their process, but the bids came in even better than we had expected. Um, on the 10-year one with Century right now, these are just estimates, but we're looking at savings of a little over $400,000, um, and the payments will end in 2024 as opposed to the 2028 um, that the four bonds are going out right now. It's two bonds and two loans. If that doesn't work out, we have our backup plan is with SunTrust, and it's a 15-year, and the percentage of savings on that 15-year was 7.2% or 381000 So we got some very favorable bids. In fact, the um, people that I'm working with, with at Roosevelt and Cross were surprised to see such a high percentage at 8.5 um, to see that much of a savings. So those, that process is still going on. Uh, I think we have until July 3rd or 4th, depending on which bank we go with. And then after that, the closing documents and stuff will hopefully be ready by the 15th, so that'll probably be your guys' next board meeting or somewhere mm -hmm. around there to come back to you guys for because we need the majority of the board signature on those. So, but I think three percent or above was the goal from the resolution, and when Mike was in here, and it came back a lot higher than that, so it was very positive. So, <coughs> I have a quick follow up. Um, I c I'm having a hard time relating this to my debt service list. Can yes. can you stipulate for us at some point in time? Which loans? None of these are SRF, I'm guessing, right? These, there's four of them. I'm just assuming that these are non SRF loans. Yeah, two of them are bonds, and two of them are actual loans. Okay. Um, two of them are loans through Providence, <coughs> and the other two are, let's see which bonds they are. I think it's right here. Uh, I just have on here a 2004 bond and a 2005 bond, a 2007 loan, and a 2008 loan. I can get more details on that. I didn't start this whole process, but right. those are um, right. the four different items that they are looking at. Right, but when I'm looking at the debt service listing, I'd like to be able to identify which ones we're reconfiguring. I think that would help. Okay. And I don't need that this minute. Yes, ma'am. But I would like to know that. Okay. I Thank you, that for Christy. You. Great work. Thank you. Sir. 
Thank you, Christy. You Oops. continue to do a good job. Thank you. Nice work. Thanks. Bill? Oh, yeah. Sitting I'm not going great. anywhere. I'm just writing down what you'd like <laughs> so I don't forget. <laughs> because I have a, another question on the SRF. Thank you. And, and Christy, uh, welcome aboard. It's great to see you uh, coming yeah. on board and, and already having your sea legs. Great work. And uh, in, in terms of uh, information requests, can you uh, send out uh, an email to the board uh, the phenomena of the call option and how that affects pricing and savings. You've mm -hmm. got that listed in your, your document yes. and if you could do that for situational awareness. So the, the call option and exactly what that means. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you had a follow-up. I now. have one quick follow-up. Having perused the list mm -hmm. from the May-June uh, Town and City status update on delayed and deferred state aid grant projects. Hampton is listed on here twice, and there are other communities in the same boat. $840,001 and $1,256,633. And I haven't got my calculator, but I'm figuring around $2 million that the state of New Hampshire owes us for SRF projects that are completed. <laughs> Are you hearing anything from them? Probably not. I don't want to put you on the spot because it's not your problem. But I am offended in behalf of the taxpayers. We have $2 million. Fred's looking for a list of potential revenues. Well, there you are. And we did those projects in good faith. And they're projects that benefit the community, sewer, fun. And I am annoyed. And I know it's not your problem. I'm not cross at you, but I'm certainly not happy with the state of New Hampshire. That's a lot of money for this town. And I think, did we get some in right at the crossover time? Did we get in? I thought we got in a little bit of yeah, money. Yeah, 50,000, and 83,907. Okay. They, they did. I knew right when Mike and I were trans yeah. transitioning, I thought we had gotten a little bit of money in. A drop in the bucket. Oh, we got something. I want my two million. Okay. Yes, but for several <laughs> years, and Fred had, I Unfortunately, think. Unfortunately, you got to wait 20 years for it. I mean. It's paid really? on a 20 year payment schedule. Yeah. I mean, I am not happy. And yeah, what are and we going to do? And it's subject to appropriation. That's yeah. why you you haven't seen it for the last 10 years because God they didn't appropriate us. anything for it. And this is outrageous. And we have SRF on the books there. We have yes. SRF loans. We on do. The books. So I'm not happy with that, and that's no reflection on you at all. But if you see anybody with a check from the state going by, grab it. Okay. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Selectman Wolsey. Thank, Thank you, you very Director. Much, Appreciate oh. it very much. Roman 4, number 3, Carl McMorrin and John Walsh, Aquarian Water Company, A. Water Company Operations and Capital Projects. Carl, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Carl. He'll be flying solo tonight. John Walsh sends his regrets. He's been tied up all weekend with a, an operating issue down our plant in Hingham, so he was unable to make it here today. So um, I'd like to assume that you all have the, uh, the right. handout that, that I've provided. Um, just speak to some highlights uh, on this. I'm happy to answer there you go. any questions. Uh, I always like to remind people our mission statement, <coughs> we're here to provide water to this community uh, that's reliable and safe and, uh, and cost effective. We should have received in the last couple of weeks our annual water quality report that goes out and summarizes the uh, compliance with all the state and uh, federal regulations. <coughs> uh, if you turn the page, that was a chart that just shows our production uh, for the year. Um, Fairly flat, average about one and a half million gallons through the first quarter, and then it warms up and we yeah. start pumping a little more water. Um, our average for June is about 2.7 million gallons per day, and over you know, the last week it's been over 3, 3.2, and we're coming into our peak weekend. Uh, the July 4th weekend, especially if it's a three day weekend and it's hot, um, we'll see probably our peak, peak production days for the year. Uh, the next slide just <clears throat> gives a snapshot of all the things that, uh, all the activities that uh, basically my staff does, I don't get much credit for this, uh, to provide this service. Um, as of today, we've got a little under 8,800 services active, and about 800 of those are seasonal uh, mm -hmm. services. Um, the next slide uh, just touches on the, uh, the WICA. Um, Water infrastructure and conservation adjustment, uh, as you recall, at 1.4% surcharge was approved 
earlier this year for projects that we did last year. Uh, it was officially implemented in April, which is a little bit later than it normally is. And it's, it's on the books, but we haven't started billing uh, the customers uh, because of the, the tax credit that I'll discuss uh, shortly. Um, this year we estimated that if we did the projects that we uh, we'd proposed, it would come out to be at a 1 to 1.3 percent uh, increase that would be implemented next January. Uh, and then there's this tax credit, which is due to a change in IRS regulations. Don't ask me to explain the details of that. All I know is they changed the way that accountants account for capital projects, and it ends up um, being a, a lower expense for us. Um, so that totals almost 4% because it goes back a couple of years. Uh, so we're going to roll all these together uh, next January in our WICA uh, proposal. And it should end up being about a 1 1.3 to 1.6% rate decrease uh, in January. Um, and actually, I think this sort of illustrates the value of WICAs because we can make these interim uh, rate adjustments um, in between our, our general rate cases and allows us to pass along cost savings like, like this tax uh, credit that we're getting. Uh, the next slide is just a reproduction of the, uh, the announcement that was put out a couple of months ago on the, on the rate reduction. Uh, the next, next page just shows a map of our main our major main replacement projects for the year. Uh, last time I was in, I talked about Ocean Boulevard. You notice there's a little bit of extension there at the end of uh, Winnicunit Road. If you go to the next slide, it gives some details on that, really on all of our WICA projects. Uh, as proposed, we had about 937,000 on the list. The Ocean Boulevard section, uh, we thought it would cost about 580,000. It actually came in a lot underneath that. Uh, because of uh, mainly because we were able to use a, a pushless <coughs> technology for the most part, uh, we burst the old main, pushed the new main through in front of it, so we didn't have a we didn't have 2,000 feet of trench to to repave. And, um, so, and then probably because that came under, um, we chose to replace the uh, the last 400 feet on Winnicott Road. There's a construction project going on there with a condo, and that's an old asbestos cement pipe. Mm. Um, and they were doing some pile driving nearby. <coughs> Basically, we were getting a little nervous about whether that pipe was going to hold up <laughs> through that. And uh, because we had basically some leftover money, we had a contractor on site. Uh, we were able to basically pivot him around and get a really good cost to uh, basically do another 400 feet of main uh, in our system and, and avoid some major uh, main breaks down there. So at the end of the day, end of this month, actually, we, we've got all that... Uh, 2,600 feet of new main and service, um, and the cost came in at as low a price as I've seen since I've been here, about $224 per foot compared to our historical average of uh, 300. Uh, the other projects on the list: the Great Boar's Head Back Alley Main. <coughs> um, it's an old main that runs down through uh, from the top of the Great Boar's Head down to uh, Ocean Boulevard. It's in a real narrow really not even an alley, it's just right on the back side of some of those cottages. Very difficult to get to if it were to break. So our intent is to get those services off that old main and decommission it before that happens. Otherwise, anybody I know that has a shovel might be out there helping us dig it, dig it up if we have to <laughs> fix a break. And the, uh, the mains on the streets at the bottom, um, we might do some planning this year. They're, they're really uh, placeholders, and as we get into our next round of capital budget planning, it's Quite likely those priorities may change in favor of some other ones. Fred mentioned at a meeting last week that the town's considering doing some more of the streets down on the beach. Um, I'm drawing a blank, Fred. Help me out. Uh, Riverview and um, Johnson. Riverview and Johnson. Thank you. Um, um, old mains are too shallow, um, and if the town's going to go in there and do sewer work, we'd like to have some nice, strong mains in there to avoid any breaks. And the next page is just the other WICA eligible projects, hydrances, hydrant services, and valves. Uh, for these, there's a $50,000 threshold, uh, so only what we spend in excess of that is eligible for WICA. That comes to about $72,000. Uh, uh, we're going to spend a little over $7,000 today. You can see the numbers. It's, uh, these are projects that typically come up in the middle of the year, end of the year, so we don't see too much uh, at this point. The next sheet just summarizes 
uh, our total capital budget, what our budget figures are, what we spent through the end of May, which tends to be a little bit slow. If I had the numbers for, for June, we'd probably be close to 50% of what the budget is and uh, what my projection is uh, through the end of the year. And then just a few things on community relations. We had a rain barrel program again this year, partnered with the Conservation Commission and some other groups. Uh, we had the uh, rain barrel painting um, activity with Hampton Academy. The kids do just an incredible job yeah. um, making those rain barrels uh, really look attractive. Uh, we ended up selling actually 17 or 18 through direct sales. There was a couple of late ones came in and uh, seven through the silent auction. And you may have been aware we, we had an Environmental <coughs> Champions Award program this year. Yes. Really to, uh, to acknowledge people who are doing things to help our environment, which helps our water resources, which helps the quality of our, our local drinking water supply. And the last sheet just shows uh, the winners of those. Um, Kathy Silver, one of our teachers at the high school, one of our students, Allison, uh, Smutty Nose Brewery. And if you're not aware, they're doing a lot of great stuff uh, over there. They're, once they get the restaurant going, they're going to be hopefully producing a lot of their own food on site uh, for that. <coughs> so that's what the landscape looks like here at the, the end of the second quarter. If you've got any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Uh, great job. Thank you. It was nice to see Smutty Nose and all of the individuals recognized uh, with that award. Mm. Um, I think most of us did go to the Smutty Nose open house. Um, they were not drinking water. Well, it had some water. Some water. In it. it had water in it. Flavor. But <laughs> no water, no beer. <laughs> but it was very nice. Um, fires. Do you keep track of the number of gallons of water used at fire scenes throughout the year, so that you can do a tally at the end of the year because the hydrant water to fight the fires is not charged. So I'm wondering if you do a recap, trying to give us an idea of basically what we're saving because of the stipulation that we do not get charged for the gallons used to, to fight fire. The fire department gives me a figure every month on what their usage is, okay. and I, I assume it includes firefighting, uh, training, other things that, okay. that they're doing, yeah. But I was thinking, I mean, like the, what, two million gallons on that A Street fire is pretty substantial. So I'm wondering if you're keeping track of them bit by bit. Not not department use, just for the yeah. putting out the fires. It's it's an estimate at best. A Street fire, I could calculate reasonably accurately because mm -hmm. we could measure what was coming into the beach zone through our pressure reducing valves and what, yeah. we, what was coming out of the tanks. So I came up with a pretty good estimate on that one. Yeah. But it was probably because it was so big relative to right. everything else we were doing that day. It right. made it a little bit easier. Okay. Well, we hope we don't have any more like that. The seasonal meters, if I recall correctly, a couple of years ago you started a program of replacing the meters for the seasonal properties at the beach. How did that work, and did you get everybody, and is that? Well, we have to take them out every year and oh. test them. That's a, okay. a PUC regulation. Mm -hmm. What we did two, two years ago, I believe, was we... We put radio read meters in all of them so that we could read them every month and bill them every month as well. It worked out better than the old system? Actually, the biggest advantage was you'd, get, you'd put one in and there'd be a leak and it would, could go for three months, four months, six months, yeah. and, and they wouldn't get a bill on the, the volume until the end of the year. And some of them were, were really big, so yeah. when we did that, then people were, you know, they only go a month. You have better control of the system yeah. and less waste. Yep, less water. waste. Okay, better that's customer great. Relations. Uh, the rain barrels were outstanding. How, how youngsters in junior high, whatever, can do that just dazzles me. What was the condition of the line? It's, it's great that you piggybacked on Peter Ross's project at the end of Winnicunnet Road to get that line in. But the old iron pipe that the Italian workmen put in, what was the condition of that line when you started finding it? Uh, on Ocean Boulevard, yeah, it it varied. Um, I mean, some of it, some of it on the inside looked pretty good actually, wow. and uh, and some of it was in more more corroded state. Uh, I mean, it was a priority because we'd had three pretty bad breaks down there yeah. in, in the last few years. Yeah, that's amazing to have that whole line replaced. Thank you so much, and uh, I am grateful for clean water. Thank you, ma'am, sir. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate it. I heard some of these things when we met at your office. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, there are two lines that go down 
Ocean Boulevard, aren't there? That's correct. How's the, how, what shape's the other line? In? The other one's uh, newer. It is an iron pipe, uh, and we haven't had any problems with it, uh, at least in recent history. And one of the reasons that the cost was so much lower is there were no services off the lane that the line that we re, uh, replaced it was basically a transmission line uh. down to the tank on uh, the Glade Path. So we didn't have to set up temporary services, which can add a lot of expense to a project as well. And any thought of expansion west of 95? <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like, a, what, what's the phrase? Build it and, and they will come. It's sort of the other way around. If, if uh, we get the request to put in service, services, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. It's more of the town and the planning process that dictates those things. Okay. We can support it. if. If it comes, so we don't. Thank you. And that technology down there on Ocean Boulevard, they blasted the pipe and then put. What it is is they actually run a series of steel rods from one end up to where you want to start, and they've got this cutting tool. It's just this big, I don't know, plug with the cutting blades on it, and you just yank it down through, and it pops, shatters the old main, oh. pushes it out of the way, and you can run a new main. In its place. How new is that technology? Is that? Yeah. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. Okay. It's gaining more popularity because of the advantages, lower costs, and less disruption. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> I would think mm -hmm. with a uh, with a line like this, it didn't have a lot of branches off it. It's a perfect place to do it. In. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. And uh, just before you go. Uh, Great job your contractor did down there on the boulevard in Winnicott. Uh, tremendous process. Saw quite a bit of it. And also kudos to the uh, Public Works Department and the Police Department for uh, managing that. It was an extraordinary engineering feat. Mm -hmm. and I think it, it grabs everybody. And uh, it's a tight corner there uh, by the yellow monster. And uh, everyone did a great job. Yeah, Thank we you. appreciate the help from uh, Public Works and from the Police Department. Fantastic job. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Roman 4, number 4, Donna Hep, Tri-State Seacoast Century Weekend Alpha, Granite State Wheelman, 41st Annual Bike Ride, September 20 through 21, 2014, with Deputy Chief Sawyer. Technical assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. We just want to know how far the deputy is going to ride. You know, <laughs> that's why wide enough seat, I'll go the whole ride. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to bring the permit before the Board of Selectmen for the Tri-State Seacoast Century Bicycle Ride, which is scheduled for September 20th and 21st this year. My name is Donna Hepp. I represent the Granite State Wheelman Bicycle Club. Um, this is our 41st um, annual bicycle ride starting from here in Hampton. Um, we expect um, 1,400 uh, recreational cyclists riding from 25 to 100 mile routes over the weekend. This is a bicycle ride, not a race. People don't, people start individually or in small groups from 7 o'clock in the morning till, you know, till noon. So there's, we do not stop traffic for this event. Um, we start at the Hampton Beach State Park Pavilion, and then the riders either go to the left and go over the bridge into um, Salisbury and do a loop, or else they head north and go up toward Maine. And uh, um, through Hampton, we go on Route 1A. I, I expanded the map a little bit if you want to look at it, but it's just just following 1A through the through town. And then um, all along the route, um, <coughs> we use local police departments um, by hiring uh, police details at key intersections and bridges. Um, as you know, we had a tragic accident last year. An unlicensed driver under the influence of drugs hit four of the cyclists and killed two of them. Um, I feel that we had good safety measures in place. Um, we have been working with the police department. Um, there was a police detailer at the entrance to the park where the riders were coming out from. Um, and a large warning sign that I think we got from the town 
-hmm. to um, alert riders so the driver had to have gone right past that sign. Um, we um, and the cyclists were riding single file on the opposite lane of the bridge. So, um, you know, I just let, need to let you know that after the accident, many, many riders contacted us and said, please continue your event. Um, you know, this, is, this hit us really hard, but um, we really feel that it's important for cycling and it's important for New Hampshire to have people come to the state and enjoy the scenic beauty of the seacoast and, and to offer a safe, a, safe, uh, a safe ride, which we, which we believe we did. This was just a, a really horrific accident that I don't think anybody could have predicted. And I know no, again, yeah, you know, I, after that uh, tragedy, there was a lot of people speculating as to the causes and pointing fingers, and as we tend to do, trying to rationalize such a tragic incident. There's two people early morning on a Saturday riding their bicycles getting hit. In the end, it comes down to one thing. That tragedy was caused by an impaired driver who now has a matter pending before the court. That's it. Period. End of story. That's what caused it. It wasn't the fact that we had an event in town. It could have been two bicyclists just out for a ride on their own. Uh, every indication is, is those bicyclists were following the rules of the road. They have a right to use the roads just as the vehicles do or anybody else does. They were following the rules. This was caused by an impaired driver. So uh, this uh, event has been going on for many, many years. Um, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't continue based upon that tragedy. It's just one of those things that does bring the light that we always go back now when we look at all our, of our operational safety plans. We felt that uh, operationally, uh, Grand State Wilman have been a great partner for the town. They've, they've run great events. Uh, just an effort to continue that, we made a suggestion that they add ride marshals. These folks are all experienced bicyclists that will be out along the route making sure that the bicyclists are also following the rules and riding single file at those times that they need to. Not that that caused the accident, but anything we can do to try to make the uh, event that much more safe, we're going to do it. And as a good partner, they've uh, agreed to that mm -hmm. request from the police department. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. I have no problem. <coughs> Very well done. Well presented. Mm -hmm. Selectman Griffin. No. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent event. Has okay. been for years. And Thank I, you. I totally support it. You have no problem with it at all. I think it's a great event. I'm a mm -hmm. bicyclist myself, so I think it's super. And I think it just promotes bicycling on the seacoast. Absolutely. And just to make motorists more aware <coughs> of what's going on and impaired drivers, nothing, you know. Right. I think we attract the kind of the riders that come are, I think, are the kind of folks that you want to have yeah. visiting right. Hampton Absolutely. Beach there. Good. They really enjoy it. So. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Deputy Chief. All right. Thank you again for Thank your you support. For that. Thank you. <laughs> Roman 4, number 5, Brian McCain, Cable Access TV, Alpha, replacement hard drives for the Drobos. <laughs> Gentlemen. We come before you because we need hard drives. We have uh, two Drobos, which uh, store all the memory, I mean all the videos of the meetings. And they're three and four years old, respectively, and um, they each carry eight hard drives. Uh, and they have a lifespan of usually what? about they're engineered for three years three years um, they're starting to fail tests now uh, once a day the drobo will go through and drobo is a large ray or array where it will span allow you to span drives and we can lose a drive and replace it in time we don't have to lose our data uh, as it does during the day it tests each hard drive and i get a failure over here we run over we replace our drive and then we give it time to rebuild it uh, we need to finish off swapping them out. Without this, we're, we're running the chance of losing 4.5 terabytes worth of data. So. Losing the meetings. Mm -hmm. Select and losing. Whatever it is, if you need it to run the cable, I just have to chuckle at technology. The more advanced it gets, the, the shorter period of time it lasts. But if you need it, do it. Selecting Griffin. I'm also in favor. Both of you, you gentlemen, do a great job with Thank what you, you do. And Thank you. I value your uh, input. Thank you. It's fine. I'm, right. I'm, in, I'm in favor. It's 
fun. Okay. I'm I think you have to teach Mary Louise exactly what it is first, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her install it. I think you will, Robert. I'll move that we authorize the request to replace the Hoosie Watsuses at their discretion. And, and a uh, second? I'll second. I'll okay. I'm sure there's a better technical term. Thank you. And a further discussion, is this a lengthy process, and how about uh, costs? In terms of labor, or yeah. or we would put that on your yeah. package along with could the three bids. They're fifteen ninety nine for the okay. Par pardon me, just a second. Could you please, so the audience can hear and the public can hear? Okay. Um, there, there's t a total of ten drives at one hundred and fifty nine ninety nine for a drive. So it was going to come out just penny short of sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. For the purchase. That's the lowest bid. We had other bids uh, of. Uh, Twenty-four hundred dollars and another one of uh, almost seventeen fifty. So that was the lowest bid. They're actually on sale. And uh, like I said, it's 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 a necessary evil. We have to if we don't do it, we lose the video and it's gone for good. I, I understand that. And so this 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 was bid out at the uh, purchasing policy. That's well, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't fall under the purchase policy. We have to come before you. In spirit, you have yeah. we bid it out. You have three bids. <laughs> yes, we have three okay. bids. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. I have no further questions. All those in favor? Uh, Unanimous. Thank you. I have one question oh, for them. Sure. Yes, sir. If I could, if you don't mind. Um, I had a suggestion brought to me the other day, and I, and I thought it was a good one. You guys might want to look at it. Is up where our town clerk's <coughs> door is, mm -hmm. is putting a monitor there that ah. runs channel 22. So while all these people are standing in line, ah. they might be able to see what's going on or, or all the, the advertisement we put on there for, for town events and stuff like that. Yeah, it's right there. It, was, it came on my desk this morning. I already started working it. Well, <laughs> somebody else had the idea too, but I thought it was a great idea and I just yeah, thought that was a good idea. So yeah. that was it. Put Rusty's picture on there. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Roman 5, consent agenda. Rusty, you've got the best hand. Uh, can you read this off? Uh, Thank you. Thanks. What about announcements in community calendar? We've done that already. We did that. We did that. Oh, man. Consent sorry. agenda. Number one, RSA 178 colon 21, restaurants, beverage, wine, liquor, license, and permission to serve alcohol outside Goat Bar and Grill. Al Fury, L Street, Lily's Diner, Frank Fioraro, 43 Ashworth Ave. Number two is the cemetery deed for the estate of Fred Sharkey. Number three is parade and public gathering, license, children's parade, children's festival parade, August 11th, 2014, license for a coin-operated amusement device, Best Western, Sunny, Limbachia, Limbachia, 815 Lafayette Road, Funorama, in Jeffrey Gray Casino Building at F Street and DM Sales Donald Brusk 225 Ocean Boulevard. You got one more on the back. Yep. Use of Town Property Lions Club Yard Sale August 16th 2014. Fox Racing Use of the Veterans and Use of the Veterans of Korean Conflict Parking Lot for the production or for the promotion of athletes autographs on August 8th. I have a question on two of these. Okay, this is for uh, the consent agenda. Do you want them removed? Is this up for discussion? Are these lengthy questions? These are straightforward. Well, on four, it's a straightforward question on the yes, Lion, Lions Club yard sale. That's not just a Hampton entity, I believe. I'm certainly happy to stand corrected. But I think that if, I believe this is a multi-town um, endeavor, Lions Club, and I have no problem with the Lions Club, but I think if this is multiple towns, rather than letting them use the parking lot free of charge, we should be charging them a, a permit fee or at least. Are we striking this? Or are you, are you pr striking this, or, or where is this going? Well, I, I'm, if it were an in town, strictly in town organization, but they're asking to use public property in town. And if the, this particular Lions Club is composed of entities from surrounding towns, I don't have a problem with that, but I think that they ought to be required to get a, a permit for a small 
permit fee, whatever that Okay, and from, from a just a consensus standpoint, and if I hear no dissent from the board, uh, the Lions Club does a lot of great stuff, and yes. uh, I'm, I'm adverse to... It's uh, the Hampton Lions Club. Yeah, I'm no, adverse to that. So, okay, okay so for the consensus, we've addressed that. Okay. Was there another issue you and had? one, yes, I do have a problem with the Goat Bar and Grill LLC and Mr. Flory, and this looks like his third establishment. He can't even pay his, his uh, dog license fees. I would like to see that pulled until he decides to comply with the uh, rules and regulations of this town. And also, I am getting many complaints from the other, one of his other establishments. So I think we need to have a little um, look at uh, that particular uh, individual. And a consensus, if Mr. Welch states that uh, Mr. Fleury has met all the requirements uh, to uh, be approved on the consent agenda. Um, he has. Thank you. It would there would be a consent on the board that this be approved with the consent agenda? I see in that consensus. All those in favor of the consent agenda is read by Slip and Bridal. Four. I'm opposed. Selectman Woolsey opposing. Approval of minutes, Roman six, June sixteenth, two thousand fourteen. I will so move approval of <coughs> those minutes. I'll second. Any discrepancies, corrections, modifications, amplifications, deletions? I didn't notice any problems. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town Manager's Report, Roman 7. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> the Public Works Director has received a response from the grant submitted to the National Fish and Wildlife Service for the Old Mill Pond Dam decommissioning project. The grant was not awarded to the Town of Hampton. A special thank you to Senator Nancy Stiles for her assistance in obtaining the contact information for DREAD employees at Hampton Beach. We finally received it. We started requesting that in February. Uh, speaking of the beach, the following activities are on the state list of special use permits issued by DREAD for the month of July 2014. A volleyball <coughs> tournament on July 12th. The Miss Hampton uh, Beach contest on July 25th and Little Miss Hampton Beach on July 26th. Current vacancies on town committees. Uh, we still have some of these vacancies and it would be nice if we would get them filled. Um, the list is as follows. For the Energy <coughs> Committee, two vacancies for two years, one vacancy for three years. Leased Land Commission, one vacancy for three years, one vacancy for four years, and one vacancy for five years. Recycling Education Committee, one vacancy for one year. If anyone wishes to volunteer for these activities, please contact the Selectman's office. Thank you. The crosswalk at 401 Lafayette Road has been painted as directed by the board. Also, um, the work at the Victory Garden yes. uh, has been completed by the Public Works Department. The, uh, the sewer and drain uh, under Toby Spanhauer, uh, Spanhauer has uh, uh, completed the work up there and uh, we received a very nice letter from the, uh, from the uh, garden. Uh, apparently the work that they have done is going to allow us to increase from the current 40 individual gardens to approximately 60 individual gardens. Mm. So they've done a very good job and they've cleaned out all of the uh, surplus material that we really don't want to have up there, the Phragmites and, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, the other poisonous whatevers. And, uh, uh, they bit of sweet, really of bittersweet, yeah. and, and uh, some of the other material. Really nice job, and, and they're very, very pleased with it. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson, questions for the town manager. Ah, uh, Fred. Um, you have an item in here for a town wide reval warrant article. Um, and I'm just, just noting this. I'm going to put this in my little folder for warrant articles coming up. But we're coming up on the five year. Reval, I guess. We are. And in conjunction with that, it wouldn't hurt to keep in mind um, Ed's request uh, to get another person out there, another data collector out there. I, I was appalled when I realized the extent of uh, deficiencies in the uh, records. His, uh, his request was a result of several meetings that we had on the subject. Yeah. A nice letter from Mrs. Wallingford, who yes. I think never gets sufficient credit for what she does in her and the garden club, her beautifying the town in front of the town office and, and so forth. I think we we deserve a, a shout out for her. Um, 
The Homeland Security Letter, May 22nd, 2014. What, what are we doing with that, if anything? What's the, um, where do we go with this? Uh, Seabrook Station Emergency Planning Zone, etc. Uh, no funding will be provided up front. This our normal. Um, it's a normal process. We go through it every year. Yeah. Uh, they are consolidating the process, so it's easy for us to do. Okay. Uh, it, in the past, it's been more difficult for us to get uh, the material done and, and coordinated with the state, and yeah. uh, uh, because of the complaints from cities and towns, there is now a uniform process to go through okay. to in fact receive these funds every year. Now this request from Hampton is $19,769, the meetings, et cetera, for <coughs> the emergency planning related to Seabrook. That's correct. But now is this a one-time uh, request or could we... This it happens looks annually. Like they, just one annual request. That's correct, as opposed to multiple annual requests. Okay, that's good. Um, Chamber, uh, you, we all probably <coughs> got a copy of the um, email from the nice lady who was commenting on our family beach uh, in Hampton and some of the disgusting, uh, what, sayings on the t-shirts that are being sold down there. I'm wondering if it might be appropriate for us to perhaps direct a letter to the Chamber of Commerce and a letter to the precinct commissioners asking if it's possible to put pressure on the owners of these uh, buildings where these establishments are just to uh, I know everyone's going to yell free speech and whatever but there are things that might not be appropriate at family speech just a point of order madam, yep. madam um, can we bring this up under new business oh okay please questions for the town manager oh, okay uh, the for the uh, NHMA policy conference we all got a copy of that. Are you going to sit down and review that with us? Because I've gone through it, and there are some things, like the pollution control legislation, that I'm certainly interested in. Are we going to conduct a review of this to get a consensus of the board as we go forward toward their September target date? If the board would like to do that, I'd be more than happy to do it. Can we... I sent oh. it out so you could all have an yeah. opportunity to, to go through and review yeah. so you can make a determination of what okay. you would like to do. Because I've gone through it. There are some things that I have questions on and some things that I think are really worthwhile. Uh, may we schedule a segment, oh, sure. Sure. Um, Phil, to... Yes, ma'am. Please, at, at any time, add to the agenda. Absolutely. If you... Because uh, I think it's important for us to go through and, and feed, give them feedback for our community on what we would like to see happening there. Um, I should probably bring this up under old uh, records, the uh, old <laughs> business, but the uh, SRF, DES water, the wastewater treatment plant sludge report, I'm assuming that that's referring to the Fournier Press and the more better efficiency that we have down it there. Is. Okay. By and large, that's what the report's about. And I have a few other items under old business or new business or wherever the chairman lets me put them. Selectman Griffin, please. No, thank you for your report, Fred. Thank you, sir. Selectman Bridal. No, not at this time. Uh, one question, sir. On the, the policy, the NME, mm -hmm. N N H M A. There, you did. Say that fast three times, right? Do we send one of us to that? Do we, in, in, the, the objective here is to send one member of the Board of Selectmen to, to be there uh, to uh, voice the, the municipality's concerns, uh, whether they be favorable or unfavorable over the individual proposals. Okay. Mm. And it should really should be an, an elected official. And when does that have to be? September. Uh, September to name sometime. You have to name by Oh, I can do that right up until the last minute. Okay. Uh, that's not a problem. All right. He's not bashful about sending people to do stuff. And I, I'm not bashful about calling him up and telling him somebody's going to be there either. <laughs> yeah. I'll I think it's important. Thank you, right, yeah. Jim. Yeah. Roman 8, Old Business, Selectman Wilson. Ah, my goodness. <laughs> um, have we set up a time, a date, an appointment for a Saturday for us to join together in harmony to look over that rolling stock, Public Works, help? 
I really want to get that done before we get into the fall. We really got to have our ducks in a row, and I don't want to be sitting down here in September babbling about all this stuff. We need to all go together and look at those vehicles. Is there a motion? I will so move that the chair set a date at 9 or 10 a.m. of a Saturday before Labor Day and so that we can all get together and go down there and, and review that stock. Is there a second? Seeing none, the motion fails. Selectman will say any other old business. Amazing. Um, <laughs> Wright Pierce, uh, Church Street, Forest, Maine. And I'm going to be bringing this up under our review if we ever get to have one on the capital improvement plan on the Church Street pump station upgrade, the force main assessment. At a time determined by the town, commission a study to further evaluate replacement or rehabilitation of the force mains. Replacement or rehabilitation costs should approxim could appro approximately range between 1 million and 2.5 million as such. Capital improvements planning should be considered. Another little piece to go in our capital improvement that I hope we can reconfigure if any of you are up to it. Um, and then, of course, and I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Waddell being very gracious on the news about the uh, water quality at Hampton Beach. But we received a copy of an email, and I am going to read this email from a nice lady who lives in New Hampshire uh, who does not reside in Hampton. It's dated Monday, June 23rd, Mr. Welch. I have just returned from a day trip to Hampton Beach with my kids. Hampton, as always, did not disappoint in many areas. The sand castles were an amazing sight, the crowd diverse, and the boardwalk already in swing. It was the state of the beach that would make me think twice about bringing my kids back this summer. Digging in the sand unearthed more cigarette butts than seashells, and I actually picked up a shredded beer can lying covered in sand with a big tetanus anyone written all over it. I am a New Hampshire resident and have watched Hampton really begin branding itself as a family-friendly destination. It is with all due respect that I need to suggest the litter on the beach was so out of control, I actually picked up around where we were sitting, directly, like from my towel, and did also pick up whatever I stepped on walking to the water. I left with two pails of trash. I have taken photos and will send with inventory to you. I know that budgets are tight everywhere. Perhaps Hampton could aggressively find litter bugs and use that revenue to fund the beach cleanup. From the looks of it, you would make a bundle. And Fred was kind enough to respond, directing her remarks <coughs> to the state. June 26th, the response from Brian Wilson, the poor soul who's apparently in charge of Seacoast Parks this year. Fred, I wanted to thank you for forwarding the correspondence you had with some park visitors recently in regard to their experience and the cleanliness of Hampton Beach. I know you are fully aware of the challenges we have on keeping the beach and boardwalk areas clean. We are constantly reviewing the contracted beach cleaning work and evaluating the amount of trash, seaweed, and other materials removed from the beach. As we get into the full swing of summer, I know I will be faced with inquiries and challenges. Being my first summer here, I expect to be tested on all of this. Please do not hesitate to contact me in the future and look forward to working with you and the town to provide residents and visitors a great <coughs> experience, etc. Last year... Thank you. Just point of order, ma'am. Uh, we're yes. talking about state-owned property. This is... No, um, no. We're uh, talking no, no, about... No, 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 let me just... Uh, is your, You're is, the one is, is, who's is, been is, sitting is, here talking may, about may, the state. May I just please... For, yes. and, and first, may, and, and, and I'm allowing you to continue, of course. Uh, the woman uh, yes. has a, a name and an address. Yes. You, may we please have that? Oh, all right. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. It's public information. And she's not. she is not a Hampton resident talking about a state beach. But she is a... Resident of New Hampshire, okay. who has visited because we want visitors. We uh, entertain enough of them every summer. Catherine Brown, 
are from New Hampshire. What, what town in New Hampshire? It does not say what town. So we don't New know Hampshire. if she's a resident of New Hampshire. Well, she said she's a resident of New Hampshire. We don't Hampshire. know where she lives. Well, let me, all right, let me I mean, put I'm it just that because when we read yes. emails and we, we, yeah. we, we make these assertions, okay. it's important to identify people. That's why when people That's come right. to, to public, uh, a public comment, we want to know their name and where they live. That's so, fine, and, and I have no just, problem just with that. Just before uh, yes. we continue, uh, this is the State Beach. Please continue. Okay, let's put it this way. Even before I was reelected last year, I was complaining rather bitterly, poor Fred, about the mess from the beach raking that was stored at the DPW, the disgusting mess. Same thing happening this year. Last year, you all saw in the patch the article on the state of the beach on July 4th weekend last year with everyone running out of their houses and the business <coughs> people coming out with their trash bags to clean the mess. I want, once again, to have this board send a request to Mr. Bryce to come down here. I don't expect decisions to be made on the spot, but I would like to see the uh, representatives from the Department of Resources and Economic Development do us the courtesy of coming down here for a meeting to talk with us. The conditions are unacceptable. We need a carry-in, carry-out policy. We are being disrespected as a community. This is terrible. You go up to beaches up and down the coast and tell me if you see this mess. Tell me if this mess is allowed. We need carry in, carry out. We need enforcement. What's it going to cost to hire some, perhaps some, some college youngsters and let them supervise? Look at the mess in the, in the two years those lockers were in the new construction down there. The estimate was 84000 I've heard higher than that. That's taxpayer money all destroyed because there's no supervision and I have heard other complaints in addition to this one that this nice lady put in here. This is a disgrace. This is not a family friendly <coughs> beach. The water quality is fine. How are you going to get to the water? This is terrible. This is, I think this is so insulting to this community to allow this to go on. The state of New Hampshire is making a lot of money on that beach they use it to fund most of the other state parks in, the, in New Hampshire. I think it's time to sit down and have a talk with them and understand what we expect. This is our community. This is our community, and I think this is shameful. I know they were upset when we passed in the um, amended uh, recycling and waste ordinance this past March, the stipulation that we would no longer accept the waste from the beach rakings. No wonder. Disgusting. Terrible. There's no reason to allow people. And who? Taught, was it you, Jim, who said when you sat down? Or I heard, I heard earlier in the day, some youngsters after graduation had a party. Not me. Oh, not you. Well, I heard, t uh, there must have been someone at work today who told me, having a party on the beach with alcohol. Big help. No enforcement. Shame. I am really, really upset about the condition of that beach, and it was never like this when Brian Warburton ran that beach. So there. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really disgusted with the conditions down there. Further old business, select can I, can I just respond? I go down the beach probably every day in the morning. You know, I bicycle or I walk. And, and I, I think the state does a good job of cleaning up the beach. In the morning, it looks fairly decent in the morning. Now I have, and I go by probably in the afternoon later on, and I, I, think, I think people do not take care of their litter. But, and I think enforcement is really hard to do. I mean, I think we need to do enforcement, but enforcement is really hard to do. And I would not want to go along with the fact that, that, it's, a dis that it's disgusting. It's not disgusting. It, it's still a beautiful beach and it's still very good, I, I believe. And I, I, I think more can be done to keep it clean, but I think we have to present a positive image of it and work from that aspect rather than from a negative aspect that, that the beach is in terrible, terrible shape. You know, up in North Beach, there are cigarette butts and stuff along yes. the... But they, but they try to clean it up, and it, 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 it's irresponsible people yes. that do it. And we can't put all the blame on enforcement <coughs> and stuff like that. 
And so that's it. Just what I wanted to say. Can you Thank do you. that at a gun court? Can you do that at some of the other beaches? Just, just, just the point of order, not to be interactive on on the old business and select <laughs> and, 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 and everyone can have their say when they come to the old business. Any any further old business select? Yes, Wilson? the uh, national uh, Air National Guard bed down. Fred, do we have any say in this? The uh, material that was sent to us because Pease is one of the areas uh, Pease has already been selected it's already been selected excellent that's good to hear and let's see I think oh and then I have something to comment on under the 12 shares section <coughs> okay thank you ma'am select McGriffin um, <coughs> I was gonna mention um, what I want. I want to comment definitely on what Mary Louise just had to say. But in the meantime, I was uh, concerned under old business about the people that are out here in the audience. So I will come back uh, to what my oh, okay. response to uh, Mary Louise's comments and Mr. Wardell's um, about the ABBA. Um, taxi. Now, Mr. Welch, I uh, was wondering if you could explain. You might, you must know a little bit about it by reading her uh, uh, complaint about on Friday evening, one of my drivers was stopped by a Hampton police officer and cited for picking up customers and dropping them off within the town of Hampton, which is not allowed in accordance with Code 44818 under the Town of Hampton Code of Ordinance. Um, I can't quite remember exactly why this uh, part is in there, but when did we raise that to $1 million? Town meeting raised it. And so it's, it was voted on by the town meeting. Town, town, the, the selectmen may propose articles under RSA 31 uh, for town meeting to adopt to allow taxis to operate with. Uh, when was that? I was trying. I thought it was two years ago. Yeah, I think it was two mm -hmm. years ago. And it wasn't on last year's. No, it was not, and it was adopted. Uh, we had a lower threshold, and all the insurance agents in town told us, "You don't want to do this uh, unless you increase it. You take liability upon the taxpayers." Mm -hmm. uh, so if you issue a license and the and the uh, the licensee is improperly insured. Liability runs to the town, mm -hmm. so it they does, all recommended this this sum. It does appear that we're the only town that has the one million dollars, though all the other towns have half a million. Yeah, and we are the only one that's adequately protected from what I can get from the insurance people who were involved. Yeah, so um, you know that's part of obviously part of her problem here. Sure. The other part. Uh, is so if she wanted to change that, she'd probably have to go have uh, put a warrant article asking that to be relieved. The petition article to change the sums. She'd have to have 25 uh, voters yes. sign that, and That's it would have correct. to be voted on. Yeah. And there'd have to be some kind of campaign so people would know that uh, Hampton is uh, obviously restrictive compared to all the other towns around here, even mm -hmm. though she obviously picks up people. Uh, from bars that have too much to drink and you know tries to keep incidents from what happened uh, Not that that person would have that hit the woman on the bicycle was gonna call a cab But she didn't even have a car. So maybe she should have thought about calling a cab. Yeah. instead of borrowing one and uh, and then you know other people constantly have to uh, call cabs and bars have the responsibility to call cabs but the part that I couldn't remember is what is it about not picking up in Hampton? I couldn't remember exactly why we did it. If you do not have a license to operate in the town of Hampton, you can't operate here. You can't pick up and drop off. You can't pick up and drop off. You may come in from out of town and pick somebody up and take them someplace, mm -hmm. okay, because they called out of town. But you can't take someone from a location in Hampton to a location in Hampton. That's forbidden by state law. We don't we don't control that. Mm -hmm. The state statute controls that. Now, remember that thing that we had down the beach that was parked at Sea Ranch, that little uh, pedicab. Yeah, pedicab. Does oh, yes. that have anything yeah. to do with the t with the taxi ordinance? At no, all? there's a separate pedicab yes. ordinance. There was a separate yes. pedicab. There is. Yeah, yeah. it's even more regulated than the than the taxi ordinance. Mm -hmm. 
So what is your advice here to um, Mrs. Bushy? Well, I, I think that if you want to lower the, the dollar values here as far as insurance is concerned, we can't do that here. That's got to go to town meeting as a petition warrant article in order to change that. Mm -hmm. There's no option for that at all. Because town meeting made it, town meeting has to. They have to change it. Right. That's kind of what I thought. I, that's what I had said. You're absolutely correct. But I'm still not clear about the picking up. Um, Unless you're licensed here, you can't per se operate within the community. If you pick somebody up in the town of Hampton, you may take them out of the town of Hampton. You may pick somebody up outside the town of Hampton and bring them into the town of Hampton and deposit them at a location, mm -hmm. okay? But you cannot pick people up in Hampton and take them to a location in Hampton. State law forbids that, mm -hmm. unless you're licensed in the community. So it basically, no matter what, unless they're licensed. So uh, if uh, they were picking up someone that was uh, drunk at Wally's and they want to get out, uh, at another, like they want to go to the Ashworth, mm -hmm. that can't happen. Not legally. No. So have we, did anything happen that caused this uh, officer to uh, go after this taxi because they've been doing this for a long time? I can't answer that question unless somebody complained to the officer or the officer saw something that he thought was illegal. So this could be the type of thing that it could have been driven by a complaint. It could have. but. The complaint hasn't come to my office, so I don't really know. This is the first I've heard. And it hasn't been to the Board of Selectmen, and that's what I told the people that I talked with. So do you have any other advice that we could? Other than to uh, come in with the insurance that we can license them uh, or to petition the warrant article for the annual town meeting to change those, change those dollar values, that would solve the problem uh, and make them the same as the other towns. That's, I, I don't see another way to fix it. I, I really don't. State law hems us in in some ways and it allows us to do other things. So do you know of any towns that are $1 million? I can't tell you that without looking. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I understand there aren't any. Bill? Further old business selecting Griffin? Mm -mm. None? Bill? Oh, well I want to bring up about what we were just Run talking about. Please. Um, okay. I uh, would like to say that uh, I do walk on the beach in the morning, and I do. It, it appears t from looking at it almost every morning, I've thought it looks very good. Um, of course, I didn't go out and sift it for uh, cigarette butts. Um, but I will tell you that the other day when I was there, I could see the uh, this, the rake marks, and there was obviously a chair there that was distressed and not worth anything. You know, someone had abandoned it, and it also had a cover to the chair that was approximately 40 feet away. And whoever had been running the rake that night actually went around it and left the rake marks like there might have been a looked like a person was sitting in the chair, and there was I'm sure there wasn't someone sitting in the chair. But they just didn't bother to stop the rake and get off. I don't know how they rake or whatever, but obviously someone was being lazy at that point. And they didn't pick up the other cover to the chair either or, or the debris that was underneath the chair. So that's something very unusual, caught my eye immediately. Um, so I would say that, you know, it appears that it isn't always being done as good as it has been done in the past. Um, <clears throat> I will say that, in my opinion, after the, all the years I've been here, the carry-in, the carry-out absolutely does not work. I don't see it working in any of the other beaches up in Northampton or Rye. I uh, see that <clears throat> people might carry it in and carry it out, but they just plop it on the sidewalk in a bag. And at one point recently, I saw a bag two feet high of bags that people just, somebody carried them off the beach, but just left them there. So I've never seen the carry in, carry out thing. I think it's failed miserably here many times in Hampton. And I will tell you that it's not just a problem on the, at the beach with the cigarette butts. At least twice a year, I pick up all the cigarette butts I can that are on my property. Mm, okay. uh, uh, 
embedded into cracks in between my uh, patio and stuff like that. And I, every time I ever do it, I make, I stop counting after 500. I have at least 500 cigarette butts on a 50 foot frontage of Ocean Boulevard. There's no beach around. Uh, I'm surprised they don't get washed away when the flood's going by from the sidewalk in front of me. But they just manage to bear, you know, yeah. be all over my property and it's disgusting. But that isn't on the beach. That's people throwing them out the window. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that's a problem. Then I have tried to investigate to find out from what I can see of why the state doesn't want to come here. And frankly, I've been told that of the six of us that are sitting here, there's three people here that are viewed as a definitely being hostile and they don't want to come here. And um, I think if we do invite them to come here, we should give assurance that we are not going to be hostile to them. That's all I've got to say. Selectman Bridal. I hate, I hate getting in the beach trash issue. Uh, I, 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 too, spend quite a bit of time down the beach, both morning and evening. And it's definitely worse at night than it is in the morning because they haven't had a chance to clean it. But the, the crew they have is working their hardest. My, my only one suggestion would be to some of the beach businesses that are down on there is that if you see a trash can that's out in front of your business that's getting full, put it in a bag and set it beside it. They're coming around as fast as they can. Sometimes those ba barrels fill up sooner. Mm -hmm. So help us out too and help them out by bagging it up so they can pick it up when it goes by and so the, the trash cans don't overflow and they're not dumping on the ground. It's a simple thing. It's everybody a little bit can help. And I think uh, if, if any message gets sent to anybody, it would be on our side of the street, to the, our businesses, to give a little help and hand a little bit. That, that let's keep the beach clean and keep it a good place, because I think it is a, a great beach. The only other thing I had on the old business was, do we need to take a vote on the, uh, the wheelman? We never did a vote on that, I don't believe. The uh, tri-state uh, century, the wheelman's. Oh, you're right. We didn't take a vote on that. Does that I'll, require I'll a vote? You. Does that take you require a yeah, vote? Looking for a permit. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll second Rusty. And have they met all the re requisites and administrative requirements <coughs> to approve? I'd make a subject to that because it's not coming in here for a permit at the moment. Okay, because I, I have sent you an email that I'm requesting some information on the certificate of insurance. Yes. So. Oh, okay. You want so to you want to hold off on this? Okay. Uh, we, oh, we have it subject I, I subject think, to approvals of department heads and 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 and, and, and board member information information. Okay, okay. So, so I'll do that. Okay, a second. Do you have a second on that? Well, oh, so you're going. Ahead I'm, I'm going with a motion. And I'll second Rusty's motion. That's okay. good. Thank you. Subject all to all the requirements to obtain a permit. Right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you for bringing that up, Selectman Bridal. Yes, sir. Okay, let me finish. Uh, <laughs> sorry for jumping in. Uh, no, I agree that, that in the mornings it's, it's very nice in the afternoons and it's people and carry in, carry out is really tough to do to make people, beach people, I Never think, especially. Never worked in Hampton. But, you know, that doesn't mean we can't educate and try to do that uh, more. I will say that, that in, in dealing with, with Brian Wilson down at the beach, I know we had a question one day on, at a meeting on the... Uh, the handicapped parking mm -hmm. and I took a walk down there the next day or so and he met with me very quickly and they gave me some very good answers mm -hmm. on it very quickly and pointed things out so he was very cooperative in that manner and, I, and mm -hmm. I think I think it's incumbent for us to work with with him and and you know what did he tell you about the handicapped there are parking? there are enough and they are well labeled I looked at all of them mm -hmm. yeah, and they, they are mean, there on Ocean Boulevard they are on Ocean Boulevard and the reason that they're not in front of the mm -hmm. bandstand is because they didn't meet code they had to move them, but but there are adequate number, and it does fit the uh, yeah. ADA and all that. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it was pretty good. The other, the other thing I just wanted to bring up, you had brought up the thing about T-shirts. Is that under old business or is that in the new business? Well, I kind of brought it up into the manager's report, I guess, or or however. Is that appropriate to bring up at this point? Because I, if if we could just put pressure on people, we probably can't. Well, I I would just say that I know one time during the seafood festival. I was walking by one of the t-shirt mm -hmm. places and the t-shirt out front was absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And I went in as a private citizen and just raised holy hell. And the guy kept trying to get me out <laughs> saying stop and he went out finally and moved them 
to the back of the store. And I think if enough private citizens just yeah. go in and say, I find that absolutely disgusting, yeah. and you really should move it, I think that's a good way to start. And yeah. We've already done what Mary Louise suggested numerous times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just ask the owners to kind of oversee a little bit and some that's of these. That's been done over and over and over again. And it's not. They, they don't like you causing a scene. Cause That's it, a good, better idea. <laughs> and, and I caused the scene, you know, good. as a private citizen. And, and yeah. the guy kept saying, please leave. And I <coughs> said, no, I won't leave. Yeah. And uh, other customers see that. They, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah. So yeah. they moved it. So it's yeah. good for people to go in and say something. Yeah. To, good, to good voice to the you. opinion, this is disgusting. Sometimes for them, it's, it's something they overlook. Yeah. And if you bring your attention to it. Yeah. I don't know how they could have overlooked this. <laughs> it was maybe pretty a, bad. Maybe an employee that put it out there. Right. Wasn't thinking, yeah. Just yeah. getting things done. Anything else, Mr. Waddell? No. Fine. Okay, thank you. So I've got just, to just a quick follow up on, on what Please. Um, Rick said. Um, regarding the taxi cabs, uh, we have no control. Uh, Fred's mentioning the in town pick up and drop off that's not allowed by the state. But when a taxi cab picks up Rusty, we have no idea where he, they're going out of town, and with our proximity to Massachusetts, quite frankly, and the airport, and, the, and Logan, et cetera, you know, there is the potential for taxi cabs, plural, to go across the state line. And insurance is a serious consideration, particularly as far as liability goes for this town, as we have this ordinance on our books. I'd be very, very careful about thank it. Thank you, ma'am. As, as I understand it, you were you were instrumental in drafting some of that, and, yes, and thank you for that. Uh, but my my brief comments under old business are: um, I'm down the be beach quite a bit, and uh, I think it's a beautiful beach, and it passes muster on any standard that anybody could raise the bar on in terms of uh, hundreds of thousands of people storming that beach on beautiful days, and our business owners and our relationship with the state and those young men and women that work for the state and the leadership at the state is extraordinary. It is uh, a Woodstock every single weekend, every single summer day. And uh, there are some uh, revenue uh, sharing perhaps, some inequities with uh, our municipal services that are conducted on state property. And those will be addressed in the future. They've been identified by this board, by the last board. And I think that's, that's well understood. And I think we have a good relationship with the state. And to speak to that, uh, Mr. Bryce called on my cell phone uh, about five or six days ago. And understand, please, that it is July 4th, and it is the middle of his operational intensity. And it is the middle of his highest demand. And not just here, but throughout the state. And I've traveled quite a bit up, uh, up north into the mountains uh, this, past, uh, this past spring. And, and do that all the time, and he has wide responsibilities. He has scheduled meetings here in the past, and Mary Louise, you called the Attorney General's office. I because, certainly did. And let me have the floor, please. Yeah. And I think that it's up to this board to, to think about what meeting should occur, and I think Mary Louise should be in attendance, and unless you're going to call somebody on yourself. And I'm perfectly happy. I'm I have the floor, please, yeah. uh, for another select member. Uh, not me, perhaps these gentlemen here with some longevity on the board left, to schedule a meeting uh, mm -hmm. with Mr. Welch going forward. And you can decide amongst yourselves, we're all, we're all adults, on, on when that would be, and you have a sit down. Uh, I don't think this venue is conducive. I don't think uh, um, it will be productive, and I, I don't think it will further our cause. And so I, I put that out there for that phenomena. And, and again, uh, it's the middle of the summer, and I think that's the finest beach, both the town beach and the state beach, anywhere uh, in the world. And I've been to a couple of them, and they do a great job. And I'm down there all the time, and I'm running on that beach barefoot. And uh, it's not really running. It's kind of a slow crawl now. But they do a very good job. Yes, sir. I'd be willing to um, go with Mary Louise. I was on, uh, I was part of the group that she called uh, the Attorney General on before. Um, and I have a, a history of what's happened in the past, 
and I plan on being part of the history that happens for the next three years. Thank you. Is there a consensus with the board that Mary Louise and Rick could schedule with Mr. Welch? Okay. Just a minute, please, we'll, we'll, because we're including you in this, Mary Louise, uh, to meet with Phil and, and the town manager and whatever other assembled guests, whether it's a state senator or a state rep or a governor's council member or, or the key staff at the state. Is that a consensus? Uh, I would suggest Nancy Stiles. Okay. So why don't we leave it to, to and, and just so we can move past the issue, we can talk around it. You and Rick it will represent the board, and you will assemble your team and with Director Bryce and the town manager, whoever you want. A, the opportunity was when we, we deliberately. Let me, just, let me just a point of order. Do, do, do you want to participate in that meeting? I want the board sitting down in public. Okay, is that a motion? Is that a, is, is that a motion? Excuse me. No, that's, that's the way this board works. Is that a, will you make a motion and then the board can decide? I want to, I will make a motion that we invite Commissioner Bryce and whoever else from his staff is appropriate to come down and meet with us in public. Is there a second? And the reason I have made that motion, if I may speak Okay, to we'll it, come back to that in, in procedure. Is there a second to the motion? Of course not. Okay, so there's no second to the motion. Now, yeah. let me, if I can go back to the question. Are you interested in meeting with Selectman Griffin, with Director Bryce, with Mr. Welch? I would have been interested in meeting as a board with, with Commissioner Bryce or whoever else in time to set up the joint operation plan, which, as you recall, was supposed to go into effect April 1st, unlike the end of December that the other plans ended, and we purposely allowed leeway for the town election and the start of the joint operation plan. We understand, just a point of order, we're on all business. It, mm -hmm. I, it was my comment on all business. We've got a consensus. What we're asking you is, is, is a collective board here, for, can, are you interested in a meeting that isn't televised with Selectman Griffin and Mr. Welch? I yes think or no? Any meeting should be televised. These are public employees. I called the Attorney General's office on purpose. I asked about the right to know law because all of us are bound by the right to know law. You know that. And he said state employees as employees are not bound okay, by the I'm gonna, right I'm to just, know just law. Okay, I'm going to just as a point of order, we're going to we're going to move So as a courtesy, we're, we're, I think okay, that they just, should they should well, a, I'm a, sorry, as a point of order, I'm taking that as a no that, I think it's you, that you don't want to do that. Uh, your motion failed. Um, it, would it be in order to make a motion that two members of the board no. Can we well, appoint two members of the board to meet with, to set up a meeting with Fred in the... Uh, well, yes. then that begs the question, will Mary Louise... What will, about... Will will say, it's, 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 I, wa I okay. want to move off this because right. it'll, the Attorney what General's office will be called again. whoever wants to meet with them, Jim? And right. I've met with what she's talking in the past about the joint operations. This has been the way the, that has gone on for <coughs> years. Without the selectmen negotiating it. If they've been, Fred's been stuck with doing If we that. want to work within the guidelines that the state has, there will be no meeting unless two people meet with them untelevised. This has been established over and over and over again. Okay, we're, 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 we're not we're not we're not going to reach common Sneaky. we're not going to reach common ground um, on this matter tonight. We're out of old business. We're into new business. Uh, number one, change order for Tuckfield Three Bay Garage Alpha amount two thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, the uh, contractor that was selected for this work and, and reviewing it, um, and if you go down to look at it, this is already in place, required a, um, <coughs> a lift in order to ensure that the, uh, the lumber that was installed did not end up underwater uh, or under snow uh, where it may freeze and be damaged. Uh, and we approved them, installing the masonry there and anchoring it into the existing foundation uh, so that, in fact, the building would actually be protected. And the cost to do that is $2,790. And there, there is sufficient funds in the account to pay for that. Okay. And would you please shed light on the purchasing policy as um, this is affected by it or how it is affected to it? Actually, it's not affected. This was a bid. Uh, the board awarded the bid. This is a change item to the bid. So mm -hmm. any change items must come before this board for approval. Uh, this is a, a change item that must come to you for approval. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson? Are you comfortable with this, Fred? 
I am. I went down and looked at it. They did a, an admirable job on it. It is secure and it will prevent the building from further damage once it's up and okay. finished. Yeah, I, I have no problem uh, approving the change order if the manager is comfortable. Thank you, ma'am. And Selectman Griffin, we were on the um, three bay garage, the 2790 modification. Do you have any I'm questions? I'm fine with that. Second. I'll make a motion that we. Oh, just the, okay. just let me clear the. Right. Fine. You fine? Okay, fine. I'll make a motion that we accept the change order at 2790 uh, for the garage. Thank you. A second? Second. Mr. Waddell, all those in favor? I yeah. discussed it with Diana earlier. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Roman 9 New Business, number 22014, two, dog warrant. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in accordance <laughs> with the statute, RSA 466, colon 13, uh, the Board of Selectmen is required by law. Uh, to issue a dog warrant uh, before the end of June 2000, before the end of June every year. In accordance with the warrant, uh, the list issued by the town clerk, which will be updated, of course, on a daily basis, uh, for those who have failed to license their dogs. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Maybe the Fiesta person would like to license her dog, but that's all right. There are individuals there that should be complying with town ordinances. Any further comment, Selectman Wilson? Moment. Yes, sir. I don't want to get you too excited. Uh, uh, on the dog warrants? Yes, sir. No. Okay, selectman bridle. Everybody, if you have to get your dog registered, get him registered. Yeah, please. Well said, sir. Okay. I, people forget. And this, does this require a motion, Mr. Wells? Yes, sir, it does because it's the issuance of a warrant. Okay. I will so move. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. New business number three: vote to accept and acquire 5.107 acre parcel map, lot nine six, two delta dash eleven Great Gate Drive. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, the board has held two public hearings mm -hmm. concerning this particular parcel of property that was required to be given to the town uh, free of charge. Uh, we do have a deed for it uh, that has come in. Uh, this is the result of a subdivision filing that was approved by the planning board. Uh, that particular piece of property backs up to Great Meadows. It borders Great Gate Drive and Woodland Road. It does contain the uh, Nullisbrook access from Great Pond, uh, from uh, Ice Pond. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. And the stipulation for acquiring this, Fred, this will be? This will be town property. Town property managed by the Conservation Commission? or do No, we it's need actually to? town property. That was a stipulation within the subdivision filing. Okay. You may... You may, if you accept it, uh, reach an agreement with the Conservation Commission to manage. I would like to see that that second step is taken. I, I will move to approve with the understanding that we approach the Conservation let me, Commission. Let me, let me just go around the, 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 to the board okay. members, please, ma'am. Thank you. Selectman Griffin. No, thank you. Selectman Bridal. No problem with it. Fine. Okay, back to you, Mary Louise. I will move that we accept the property as town property, and, but also arrange for a meeting with the Conservation Commission to get their uh, concurrence in uh, managing that property. Second. There's a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Roman 9, new business. Number four, vote to waiver, quote, purchasing policy section 714-B-3, award of bids for professional proposals for the software support agreement with Tritec Solutions Police Department. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, we have a computer system that requires annual maintenance, and there is a maintenance agreement on that. That's what we're talking about here. Um, this is a single source. Uh, agreement. Uh, it is not available from any other concern to, to match the computer system currently being used in the police department. Uh, so the recommendation is to uh, this is a $14,000 cost for the annual maintenance of the system and the recommendation from the chief of police and from myself is that the board approve this since there is no alternative short of no software support agreement at all. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. No, no problems. They need this. Any board member problem? A motion? Also move that we accept. Second. Okay. By Mr. Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 9, new business number five, use and protection of 12 shares property. I asked to have this put on the uh, warrant, and I've been talking with Fred uh, somewhat about this. As you may know, the, cons the conservation 
the commission has a, a subcommittee going to um, investigate the possibility of turning this property into a town forest. But I think there are steps that we could take while that um, consideration is going on. Um, first, uh, in this is public property. Um, it's open to the public, but it is being misused in some uh, aspects. And I think we need to start cracking down. For example, um, it's very nice uh, for individuals to walk their dogs, but we have a leash law in this town, and if individuals are walking their dogs in the 12 shares property or anywhere else, those dogs need to be on leashes. They should not be let loose to harass the deer. Uh, number two, uh, I understand there has been cutting of trees in that area. That's town property. I couldn't go, remember the, the property on uh, Dearborn Avenue where the trees were cut down inadvertently by Public Works? Well, suppose we went and cut those trees down and sold them for wood or some such. Individuals have no right to go in and damage anything or um, f use anything for their personal use, uh, such as cutting uh, timber. Um, we need to see that we have consistent signage at White's Lane, Jaunty's Lane, and Muncie Drive. Those are the access points for that property. And we need to give some consideration, and hunting season is coming up soon in September. We need to have some consistent signage there, and I've discussed this briefly with Fred. Uh, letting people know the, the do's and don'ts, if you will, uh, going in on that property. Uh, and especially during hunting season, um, what clothing to wear or not. Uh, so and we'll see. Just, just a point of order yes. so, so the public knows. Could you expound exactly on 12 shears yes. so they know and have a feeling for it? Thank you. Right. So just uh, be, f and there's also an old, old graveyard in there that really needs to be identified. And I know there are some uh, things we have to comply with per the state of New Hampshire. But I think it's, it's really a shame that that area has been neglected. It is common property. It belongs to all of us, and it's not there to be mistreated. Um, we also need to uh, dispense with <coughs> target shooting in there. Uh, that's, that's risky. So just an overview for you. Uh, I would like to discuss or at least have... Um, uh, the ability to discuss with Fred the possibility of posting some signs. We'll need separate signs. They don't have to be elaborate, um, posted for hunting season to warn people about the activity in there uh, we, and, and the hours when it's not wise to go in and, and clothing to wear. So I just want you to be aware that I think we're, st we're making forward strides in starting to protect that property that has really been neglected for a long time. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. I can see posting some signs. I, 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 I don't have a problem with that. The problem is some people have to take on their own re responsibility, and I don't want to have to cross that line with a, well, there wasn't a sign there, so we could do this and that. They have to still take on that responsibility that oh, yeah. during hun hunting season they shouldn't be in the woods with a fur coat on. Not usually, so, no. So, um, but putting some signs up, I think anytime you can educate the public, that's that's mm -hmm. fine. Select them though. I hate signs in the woods. No, it is entry at the yeah, entry. Yeah, the entry way. has to be in the entry. It has to be very right. small. And yeah. I mean, if people are so dumb not to know what to wear during hunting season. Well. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> there's enough education on that all over the TV. and uh, that. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Don't wear your antler hat during hunting season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People should fine. be stupid enough to drive without a license. That's right. And impaired in somebody else's vehicle. Any further discussion? No. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, ma'am. Roman 10, entertainment license on it. Yes, sir. Pardon me. There's one thing I, I wanted to ask before, and I, I forgot to ask. The floor is yours. About the taxis. One more thing. That yes. I, that was, okay. How many licensed taxis do we have in Hampton? I believe we have one. And what is it? I can't tell you. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Yeah, because I tried to look, and I don't think we have any. I think was we what? have one, but that's it. Yeah, because we used to have three or four, but we only have one at this point. Yeah, 
Well, I'd like to find out who that is because, I mean, I'm trying to picture if I was a drunk person in a wheelchair at the Ashworth and I wanted to go to Wally's, how would I get there? You couldn't. Taxis come in from out of town to service Hampton. You right? can't pick up in town it's and deposit in town if you're not licensed here. Yeah, so uh, I think if there is a licensed taxi, we need to know so that these different bars down can know how to who to call. Right. My last inquiry was I believe there is one that's licensed, but and I'll, it, I'll check surf, and let you know. Surfside taxi? Is it? I can't. Uh, I, would I want just to, looked it up. That's I, what it says. I would want to take a In guess, Hampton? It says Surfside, uh, surfside Taxi of Hampton, New Hampshire. Side. Operating 5.30 to 1.30 a.m. I don't know. That's what it says. Hmm. Now, okay. if somebody had one cab or two cabs but only one registered in town, mm -hmm. they could still do that, correct? Okay. Okay. So they could have one car that was just for Hampton. Right. Yeah, because I did have – people leave in my salon call for mm -hmm. cabs, and uh, I, don't, I didn't know who to call. We've always called that one ABBA only because that's the only name I knew. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> The only time we have a use for a cab, as far as the town is concerned, is for welfare. Mm -hmm. And it's usually taking someone from here and taking them to a facility someplace. Yeah, because that's the ones that, that ABBA usually uses. Yes, right. Okay, thank you. But I'll let you know who it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Closing comments? And see none. Up, 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 yes, ma'am, go ahead. My goodness, you are efficient. I'm going to hark back to the beach briefly in this context. I don't know how many of you went down to Public Works in the past couple of years and looked at the messes that were inflicted on this town from those beach rakings. It was not nice, it was a mess and it took us three tractor trailer loads to get that mess out of here and I never want to see it again. There has got to be a way to maintain some reasonable degree of orderliness uh, at that beach and not uh, not inflict these dreadful messes on all of us. Any other closing comments? A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. At 8.59. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have documents to sign. Yes, sir.